calmly explaining the backlash of Ghost of Yotai. So, Sucker Punch, the developers of 2020's Ghost of Tsushima has finally shown us Ghost of Tsushima 2. Wait, no, Ghost of Yotai, a game that takes place 300 plus years after the story of Jin Sakai in Tsushima and has a new main character since, well, Jin can't be alive anymore. To say the new character has caused a bit of noise would be an understatement and while the internet is too busy with one side gaslight and the other, I thought I would provide you all with a rare service in today's video. A calm look at why the backlash exists in the first place and my personal thoughts on the matter. Oh, and before we proceed, just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who subscribed recently when watching my Soul Reaver Remastered video. Between this and the Croc Remastered video, that's more than 80,000 views. My mind is blown. Thank you again, and let's get to today's video, which is less about hype and more about a mature discussion. You have been warned, ladies and gentlemen. Thinking hats on, please. So let's get straight to the point. So you know this video is full of value and not stretching things out. We can no longer play as Jin, but instead now play as Atsu, a female Ronin, and the gaslighting has been strong on this one. The gassing is nothing creative or new. Gamers hate women, and of course they are mad. All these sexists all over the world. Now. If we are done listening to children who do not actually want to have a conversation, how about we talk about what is really going on here? Keep in mind the gaslighters are not children because they think differently to me. I am much more mature than that. They are children because they have immediately gone to name calling to inflate their own egos for social superiority. Well, we are gamers and we don't care about that stuff. So. I'll tell the world exactly why people are upset and what that means for the success of this highly anticipated game. So let's get the easy one out of the way first. Are gamers just man babies chuckling a good old wobbly because they have to play as a girly girl? My goodness, I think I lost some brain cells even pretending this was the reason for a moment. No. They don't mind playing as girls, and this has never been an issue. Gamers made of both females and males love playing as chicks. We have had countless games that have a woman as a lead, and their sex has never been a problem before. Stella Blade, strong chick, main star of the show, came out super recently and we all loved her. Want to jump back all the way to the 90s? How about Lara Croft? We loved and supported her during a time where it was unpopular to be a gamer. We were supporting countless women in video games, leading their respective series during a time where girls even made fun of us for playing games in the first place. Countless other examples exist, but I don't want to spend too much time on this point because the evidence is overwhelmingly shows we like playing as chicks. It's such a low IQ attack and frankly, Male gamers support female characters even more than girls since we buy most of the games to begin with. On to the next point. Woke. Let's not waste time. That word next to any game these days is like putting something nasty smelling in tasty food. It stops most gamers from even taking a bite. And why is that? Why is the next gaslight argument that gamers hate diversity in games? Do we really get upset if someone looks different to what we expect? That Jin, the male hero of Ghost of Tsushima, has been replaced by a new character who happens to be a girl? There's two answers to this. The first is simple enough and makes sense. The answer is yes. It's a bit upsetting to not see Jin as the hero this time, but it is not because he is a man and represents all men or something. You see, Video games have a special place in gamers' hearts. When a gamer experiences a wonderful game, that experience stays imprinted in him or her for the rest of their lives, and I am not joking. 
there is a reason why my croc and soul reaver videos have done so well despite the fact these games are over 20 years old that's because the memories are dear to players and have been imprinted in them why do i bring this up now ghost of Tsushima was a brand new ip and one universally loved by all even if woke reviewers pretended the game's existence was offensive to Japanese people. These same reviewers are supporting Assassin's Creed Shadows by the way, so um, I don't think they understand the concept of irony. Anyway, game was loved and launched five years ago. We fell in love with everything in that world. The graphics, music, gameplay, and of course, the characters, especially the main hero, Jin Sakai. Now, Lord Sakai since has also imprinted his existence in players' hearts around the world. One of the most exciting things to do as a player is when we fall in love with a game, we can dream of the next game to come and what else we can do with our new favourite hero. So of course, players have every right to be a bit disappointed that the very next game immediately is set in a time where the hero does not even exist. That's a tough pill to swallow, and it's not toxic or anything to be upset that we cannot continue his story. It's like if Tomb Raider 2 had you playing as a dude, we would all be like, what the duck, where is Lara? Ladies and gentlemen, a quick friendly reminder to everyone watching that if you also believe that video games are about escapism and not activism, please subscribe today to empower voices like mine that just want games to be games. That's it, God bless, and let's proceed with the tough conversations we sometimes have to have. Let's have the deep conversation with the word woke, and I'm going to need you all to be mature and listen. If you start projecting and attacking me or my subscribers in the comment section, I will remove you. Even if what you say is true, if you're nasty and I simply don't like your tone, you're gone. This video is for conversation and insight, not to find random people on the internet to fight with. I'm not interested in that. This second part will briefly go over the voice actress for the main character, who is also the face mocap. This voice actress is very woke. Not because I have decided so, but because their existence on Twitter shows overwhelming evidence of this, and evidence is not even required. She is an outspoken activist, believes in every trend from ban the police to comfortably hating large groups of people who dare to think differently to her, to pronouns and everything else you can think of, Trump support is bad, the list goes on. I'm not going to even bother mentioning her name, since you can easily find that information yourself, and I plan on using her as a symbolic jumping off point, because it's what she represents and the potential impact of Ghost of Yotai, Yoti, that I want to discuss. I'm probably mispronouncing that every single time. Considering Concord's body is still warm, its death was so recent, right? It makes sense that players would be nervous around another potential woke effort that almost always results in games failing. Sucker Punch is a loved developer and nothing would be more tragic than the follow-up to Ghost of Tsushima failing because they were forced to implement things players do not want and the feeling of escapism is lost. So let's first define woke just so we are on the same page and then I'll provide you with evidence as to why the concern is in existence in the first place. For those of you who are getting upset that I'm using the term woke here, you just have to deal with it because this is a mature subject matter and it is important that we do have these conversations occasionally because as much as it would be nice to just ignore all this, to let it go away, by itself, these things don't go away. We have to vote with our wallets and we have to be on top of things. Sadly, I'd rather just get excited instead of having to do all this homework. Anyway, there is a lie that has been pushed that there are these nasty people who simply don't like change. Little men who hate women, possibly virgins, and definitely sexist and racist. Let's chuck that in there. The truth is when they and I use the word woke, 
we are referring to unwanted changes to video games that do not improve the game experience. We are referring to social politics implemented into game franchises specifically to virtual signal and not because it actually improves the game story or world. We are referring to the uglification of video game characters and female characters have easily been impacted the most. Where representation is focused on first and the actual game is an afterthought. Woke in this context is used as a term to easily describe the deprioritization of the games themselves. Now, in case you have noticed, games have become insanely expensive. Mostly because a successful game can almost justify any budget, publishers have become greedy and are not interested in a safe bet or simply a profit. They want it all. Sadly, this means that it only takes one or two massive failures to make a company sink. Working anywhere from 5 to 10 years on a game needs it to be a success. We have seen countless video game studios close after launching their latest games to very poor reception. Sony recently launched Concord, an online shooter which apparently all up has cost around $400 million to make and to produce, and it only lasted 11 days on the market before Sony themselves took it off online and fully refunded everyone. The game character roster was easily focused on diversity and virtue signaling, which is their choice to do, of course, but the vast majority of players are not interested in that at all as a priority, especially when the actual game itself was nothing special. This move hurts Sony a lot, and while it may be easy to assume gamers love it when games fail and enjoy the world on fire around them, online even using terms such as grave dancing to describe it, the truth is gamers care more than anybody. We have been playing games for decades. It's beautiful art that inspires, brings joy, or provides the escapism we need after a tough day. It's our happy place. This happy place of ours, even though it has always grown and changed, has over the last, say, 10 years, been slowly used as a tool by social activists and has been getting out of hand with each year that passes. You see, and I really want this moment in the video to stand out to you, this is the important bit. Games have always been inclusive and the ones messing that up are ironically the activists themselves and I can prove it. This video itself exists because we have a female lead? That is utter rubbish. Why were gamers okay with strong leading women in video games for decades before these activists appeared? Why were we okay and even loved so many of these female characters before it was cool or socially accepted to do so? It's because we don't care what you think and put the games first. If we are playing an awesome game, we don't care what we are playing as. Black, white, man, woman, the gaslighting needs to stop. Every time a studio closes down, the games normally die with them. And that's truly upsetting. While activists do not care when games fail because it was only a tool for them to push their beliefs to begin with, that is not the case for gamers. We mourn the loss of game franchises. When a modern game aims for the so-called modern audience, this is meant to be a large group who actively support these so-called inclusion practices. When a modern game aims for them, the game every single time has failed financially. This audience is actually very small. They are a loud bunch of people, but they are very small nevertheless. So time and time again, publishers are told to aim for them and ignore the typical gamer who is apparently meant to be small in size. If this was true, all the many games that have launched in recent memory, which heavily embraced the culture war and implemented as much diversity and inclusion as possible, would have all been a roaring success, right? I mean, if people like me are actually the minority, 
us smaller group not buying games would have little to no impact. However, and this is where the lies start to fall apart, anything we don't support fails, and anything we do support becomes a mega hit. Countless examples are available, but let's look at the most recent one. Black Myth Wukong, a game not liked by the modern audience that is apparently very large in size, should have failed since only us traditional gamers were interested, right? Well, it has sold 20 million units. That's massive numbers. How about Hogwarts Legacy? That was also a game that modern audience hated, and that sold 24 million. All right, back to Concord that had everything the modern audience can want and backed by Sony personally as a first party title, that game literally died in two weeks. Where did this so-called modern audience go? There have been many other games that should have been big hits if they looked after fans. You know, what games used to do not too long ago, but instead made changes to appeal to that tiny modern audience. Those studios are all now closed or will be if their next game is not a massive hit. Even Ubisoft is under threat currently because of the poor performance of Star Wars Outlaws and Assassin's Creed Shadows is as disrespectful to Japanese people as it comes. So pre-order numbers and hype are extremely low. Shareholders are furious and threatened action against the company as share value plummets. Also that massive game Sea of Thieves, that flopped as well. So um, not a good time for Ubisoft, although I don't believe that game flopped because of wokeness or anything like that. I think that was just genuinely, the game just flopped. So, in returning to Ghost of Yeti, <laughs> I know it's not Yeti, but I'm going to say it. In returning to Ghost of Yeti, now that we understand gamers don't actually care if they play as a girl or not, because they care more about what it means to play a girl and why the developers have chosen to make that decision in the first place, gamers care about influence. If a very woke activist who is a voiceover artist and face mocap, she obviously brought something to the table they liked. I mean, they had to hire her, didn't they? They could have easily chosen someone who does not have such an aggressive online presence. The question is, how many other similar minded people are now part of the creative process? People on that side of the fence love to hire their own and create an environment of separation. I highly doubt beside the woke people are those who think the complete opposite and are able to exchange ideas for a middle ground. These type of people are too angry and narcissistic for that. Their views can never be challenged and a middle ground never met. How do I know this? Look online. The activist type, and only the activists, not the regular fans, I'm not going to stroke everyone with the same brush the way they do to us. There is an endless supply of mocking and name calling from them. No one is trying to understand why this annoys gamers and just go around calling everyone sexist, which is actually very insulting and belittles anyone who has actually experienced sexism when you continue to misuse the word like that. Take that from a straight white male, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> now, is it possible that despite the voiceover actress, the game might be fine? Yeah, totally. And many are waiting to learn more as they should. That even includes myself. What I am defending is gamers' right to be skeptical currently. Now, to simplify things further, why is woke bad if everything I said is true? If gamers never have had a problem with playing as a strong woman or have never cared about skin color or other so-called inclusive features, why the pushback at all? For a number of reasons, actually. The first is funny but sad. To be brutally honest, and I'm not even acting smart here, but the games that normally feature a lot of wokeness happen to also be pretty boring games. It's not like these games are amazing and the woke makes us look the other way. They virtue signal and the games aren't any fun. So avoiding these games is actually very easy. A big part of this is because the developers are in such a strong echo chamber with toxic positivity that no one dares question the gameplay, quality, or what they bring to the table apart from an inclusive cast with maybe pronouns. Even if I liked people 
who thought like this and supported everything they stood for. As a gamer, I would still avoid their games because they are rarely any good. A game's concept and focus should not be on what we can push here in terms of virtual signaling or current politics, but the focus should be on an amazing game first. Also, what happens as I mentioned before, is these types of people only like to hire their own. That means if we had two applicants for the same job, one is much more experienced and talented than the other, but their beliefs don't line up with the current trends, it means the lesser qualified person gets hired instead. Fast forward a little bit down the track, a whole development team is made up of prioritized beliefs and representation instead of people who are best suited for the job and who brings the most skills. My skin color, sex or beliefs should not dictate if I get a job over a more qualified person. The second part to this, apart from lower quality games, is the disrespect and change to pre-existing franchises. It's bad enough games are dead on arrival these days and studios are closing down. It's bad enough we can't just get excited for upcoming games like Ghost of Yeti, yep I'm sticking to that name, and instead have to always take a wait and see approach while we hold our breaths and hope that a game is just a game in 2024 and beyond. But these activists are even making old games receive patches like removing male or female options in old games and replacing with terms like body type A and body type B or changing the original character designs because we have all gone soft now. Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake has recently revealed that the reason body type A and B and the many changes done to the characters, the reason why that has been done is as a direct result of the Japanese developers getting lied to. The West has been telling them that it is mandatory that they have to change things, that they can't dare just have male and female options. Everything needs to be changed to fit an agenda. That is not inclusive, that is borderline cult behavior. Even the developers themselves think it's ridiculous. If these activists did not exist, while we would have been upset that Jin's story is over in the new Ghost game, we would have otherwise been too busy celebrating. But instead, we have to worry. What else are the activists going to have put in there? Is it safe to even get excited? And what about the future of Sucker Punch? Because as I said, gamers actually care long term. We want games to stay healthy and thrive. You can have your work games but keep your grubby little hands off of things that don't belong to you. Until proven otherwise, I do reserve the right to be optimistic for this Ghost of Tsushima 2 game. I doubt it, but hey, maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe this can just be an awesome game, because as I said, even though I'll miss Lord Sakai, I don't care that we're playing as a girl. That isn't a problem to me, it's what it represents. And hopefully, what it represents is nothing. Anyways, see you all next time. Bye-bye.